Hey, this is Mad Matt, Budget Boosin, here to talk to you and show you some interesting things. How many of you own a 92 through 2002 Camaro or Firebird of this generation? Now, right now, it kind of looks like one of those funny cars with the hood up, doesn't it? Or with the body up? But that, believe it or not, is the way to remove these engines. It's the best way. Because the engines are tucked so far into the uh, firewall, and they do that for reasons of handling. Because the more your engine is behind the front wheels, the better and the lighter and more nimble a car handles. So, what I'm going to show you here is here the engine and transmission and the whole K member assembly has been dropped for you. And basically, you're removing just what you have to to separate it from the body, the unibody, and the areas where lines are attached. So you're only going to disconnect what you have to. You got your PCM, primary control module, power contrain module, and you disconnect that. That's under the hood. Air conditioning lines, various, uh, just the lines you have to to separate it from the unibody. You'll leave your injectors plugged in and everything, your spark plug wires. Now you'll disconnect one brake line because some of them are on the K-member K already, so you'll leave them in place. You just disconnect what you absolutely have to, and you got the whole engine, as you can see, the whole engine, and transmission, and drivetrain, including the drive shafts, all on the ground. And as you can see, we'll just kind of go around with the camera and show you the bolts that have to be removed. The areas like the uh, strut tower, K-member bolts, transmission mount bolts in the back. There's some on the side and some on the very back of the tail shaft. Just sway bars, for example. Some suspension geometry, some brake lines, and look at that. You've got the whole engine assembly on the ground, ready for you to work on. In the case of this Camaro, it's got bad head gaskets. So, if you looked at it in the car, there is no earthly way to get those heads off where they're into the unibody. They're just too tight of clearances. So, instead of lifting the engine, you're dropping the engine. And you have to get enough lift under the car's body to allow you to drop the engine and transmission and drive shaft assembly. Now, you're gonna hook your engine crane engine hoist to these areas on both sides. That'll give you the strength to hook to your cherry picker to lift the front end of your car off the ground high enough to leave the engine on the ground basically. So there's something you don't see every day. Most people lift an engine out of a car. This one drops. Drops to the ground and you just basically have some stuff under it to make sure you're just getting it right and slowly lower into the ground while you're lifting the body off and making sure nothing slams down, you just kind of common, you know, I call it rare stance, you know, just watch everything as you're disconnecting and slowly coming up with the body to make sure nothing goes to slam on the ground. Simple stuff. But most people would think you'd never drop an engine out of a car, but sure as I'm standing here, that's what you got to do for the most efficient way and the most, well, I'd say time, time efficient way to drop an engine out of this 92 through 2002 Camaros and Firebirds. Well, there you have it. I showed you how to do something that a lot of people probably wondered how to do over the years, 92 to 02 Firebirds, Trans Ams, and Camaros. Great stuff. And it's kind of a nice little knowledge to add to the toolbox. So I hope you like that, and thank you again for watching Budget Boosting. If you like us, like us on our Facebook, like us on our YouTube page. Like us on our budgetboosting.com. Check out our window stickers. Get one. It'll make any car that much better. And remember, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. It has a four-barrel Rochester quarter jet carburetor. And the fuel-air mixture goes into this little valley and goes to the intake of the turbo's compressor. The turbo compresses it and mixes the fuel-air mixture and shoves it in the intake manifold. When the piston comes down, the valve opens up. This nice forced fuel-air mixture goes in there, and there's your turbo boost.